All right. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Course Creator Community Podcast. I am super excited because we have an absolute rock star on the line this week. And I know I say that about every guest every week, but this person actually is. I don't know too much about him because I tried to check him out on social media and his website and everything was in Danish. Uh, so I don't know too much about who he is and, and what he does. But what I do know is that he's recently launched an online course and he made 200 sales on his opening night. Now, a lot of us launch a course and struggle to make two sales. So the fact that he's done 200 means that he's uh, he's done a couple things right. So without further ado, let me introduce Sir John Lucic. Sir John, how are you? I'm doing fine. Thank you, John. And thank you for having me here. No, thank you for coming on. Um, let's give the audience a bit of background, maybe not even about your course yet, just about yourself. Who are you? What do you do? Where are you based? Give us the, the rundown there. Yeah, uh, well, my name is uh, Sojan. I'm uh, 39, living in Denmark. Um, been a, I, I was, I'm an entrepreneur for several years. And uh, right now, for the past two years, I'm uh, working as a teacher in school where I educate people in uh, programming and communication. Awesome. All so right. That's, uh, that's my story. Beautiful. Now, run us through, through the course. What do you teach? Who's it Who's it tailored for? Yeah, so I, I, I teach... Uh, young web developers uh, that's my uh, full-time uh, job and uh, when i do my lessons i always um, miss something to fall back on to tell my students well mm -hmm. go here and see this course so the course was mainly created uh, for my uh, students and then i just thought why not just release it to the rest of the world uh, because i got some nice uh, feedback from my students and uh, right now i have created two courses uh, since uh, we last spoke um, oh, it's wow. all in the genre of programming and uh, I'm actually trying to educate and uh, give some motivation to a younger audience uh, to get started with the web development. Uh, so my course is actually mainly how to get started, uh, how to make your first line of code and uh, what they can achieve by learning uh, to program. Awesome. And when you say young people, so John, are you talking like elementary uh, school, middle school, high school, university? Uh, what, what is it? It's from uh, 17 of age and up. 17, so 17 to 30 uh, around 30 yeah awesome all right so and is there is there high school students taking your course or it's more like college and, and above it's more like college and above so far awesome gotcha and another interesting thing about your courses they're all in danish right i, I went on your website couldn't understand anything do you want to tell us yeah. a little, little bit about that and why yeah 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 um so since uh, I like to educate and I like to motivate people. Um, I, I started first, let's see what I can do here in Denmark. Um, and it all started by, I posted a small video on TikTok just to try it out, see, see, see how it was. Mm. It was back in May. And uh, as we speak today, I have up around uh, 11,000 uh, followers on TikTok, Ooh. all uh, in, interesting all into, uh, yeah, in, all in Danish. Yeah. Um, and then I saw a, a market for it. I said, if there's 11,000 people who are following me and want to, get more information about programming. Uh, I might do a course in Danish as well. And uh, so I did, and it's it actually going pretty well uh, so far. Awesome. Well, I think there's a, there's a couple cool things there. And can I ask, do you know the population of um, Denmark? Six million. Yeah. Okay. So it's, it's interesting. And I'm seeing more and more of this because I think there's two really good points there. For everyone listening, I think it's always easier to dominate your local market first. So I did it over here in Australia too, right? When I was when I was when I was doing my, when I started my fitness education online courses, I could have gone anywhere in the world, but I started with Australia, and I did that for about five or six years, just Australia, 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 and like could have gone to the US, which is I don't even know how ten times bigger or, or whatever it is, but it was just so much easier to dominate Australia first because a there was less competition. B, there's like a, a level of trust there. I'm sure it's the same in anywhere in the world. Yeah, I'm yeah. Sure in, in, in Denmark, if you're buying off a Danish person or not like a, someone that lives in da in Denmark, there's already a level of trust there, you know? Same over here in, in, in Australia. You know, if you buy from another Australian, there's a level of trust. You've probably got some mutual friends, you know, you see the reviews They've from other Australians, there's a level there. Um, but I think there's an, there's an extra advantage that you've got, Sir John, in that it's a different language. So let's say, for example, like I'd say me in Australia, you know, I've got some advantages being Australian, but the language is still English. So it's kind of like it's not that much different to, to the other ones. But because you've got a whole different language that you can do, that's like another way to niche. 
and I'm seeing this more and more in the the um, course creator space. I was speaking to a, a lady the other day from Belgium, which I think is even not she's not even Belgium. Where is it? I can't even remember the country, but it was it was like it was similar to a Denmark where you know there's five million people in the country, and they're the only country that speaks that language there. And she's a food blogger. And she just you know, yeah. was, was was making sales through the roof and, you know, followers through the roof because there's a whole heap of people in Europe and other parts of the world that, you know, they don't necessarily, they, they prefer to follow people in their own language as opposed to the English language. And there's also less competition, you know, like you might know the stats, Serge, on how many English web developer courses are there out there? Do you know? Or, or... Uh, probably a million. Probably yeah, yeah. a million. <laughs> you can just go to Udemy.com and you'll see a lot, a lot of courses there, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I think that's an awesome move. And I think for everyone listening, I, yeah, I think it's a good, at least definite, definite start point. And I'm not sure if you know at this yeah. stage, Sir John, are you, do you know at this stage if it's always going to be Danish or in a few years' time or many years' time, are you looking to get into the English market as well? Or is that a worry about it later question? Actually, I, I don't think I'll ever ex exceed the Danish border. There, mm. There's so much potential here. And uh, yeah. I mean, every year there's a new uh, class in school. So there will always be new students. Uh, yeah. And I can always sell my course to the next year, next year, and so on. And, and as you were, you were saying, it, it is so much easier to impact your own local audience. Yeah. And especially with the tool like TikTok, that they're actually doing yeah. everything for you to help you get to your local audience first. Yeah. Um, my, my idea was to um, motivate people to start the edu education as web developers where I um, teach. And um, my, my goal was to be found every time somebody go on TikTok, on Instagram, on Facebook, on YouTube as well. I have also a YouTube account and, and type in the phrase, uh, become a web developer in Danish. Mm. I will be there. So if, yeah. if, if you go and, 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 and write, which is in Danish, uh, I will be the one who has been shown now because there are no other other people in the market who does this. Yeah. So it's so easy to impact and be the authority. Uh, and the funny thing about this is once you became authority, it's so harder for, uh, for others to come in and dominate the, the market. Yeah. Uh, I, I was speaking with the companies, uh, larger companies who also would like to be a part of the TikTok movement. And they have hired an um, analysis uh, company to find out what's in the market uh, for them uh, and the funny thing is they always call me and say so you are our greatest com competitor because you are the number one that we have to, to, have to watch out for if we are going to digital market in denmark because there, there are definitely no other danish developers on tiktok and it sounds a bit strange and harsh but i've been spending the last six months asking for people do you know anyone <laughs> because i would like to have someone to talk with uh, just to get some inspiration from uh, so yeah uh, take your own home market first and then uh, expand that's uh, that that is the the goal here 100 percent. and there's a there's a few things there i want to elaborate on so a lot of people listening may not know this but tick if you start a tiktok account to start with anyway they usually show it mainly to people in your own country so if sir john's in um, denmark and he starts a tiktok account you know they're going to show it to his people first so i think that's an important note there because i didn't know that starting off i was like yeah let me start a tiktok account and you know go over to america but I'm like, that's an Australian see in this. So I think that's a yeah, important yeah. note. Um, and also something Sir John touched on, if you can be first to market, it's such an advantage. And uh, there's so many ways we can look at this. I think maybe Udemy is the example. It's kind of like, you know, those people that got on Udemy 10 years ago, it's so hard to topple them. Even if your course is better than them, They've just been on it for so long. They've got all these reviews, you know, they've got all these people that have taken it. They're up the top of the thing. And that's the same with kind of any social media platform, anything in the world, really. If you're first to market, it's hard for people to catch you. And that's essentially what Sir John's done here. He's found a topic that is in high demand and there's low competition. He's gone in there first. He's going to have a lot of happy days moving forward. And the other advantage to, to what he's done now so you've got three courses out there at the moment, Sir John. Two, two courses in, in total. Two courses in total. Oh, two in total. Uh, okay. Um, but uh, oh, yeah, sorry, yeah. go. No, you go. No, because I, I, I've already, uh, uh, I have already recorded three new courses. So I'm right right yeah. now. I'm just in the editing process. So be, 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 by the end of the year, I'll, I will have five courses uh, up and running. Yeah, and that's the advantage if you do what Sir John's done, where he's got like a big audience in one location that wants all the things. He can just have a, a suite of courses now. 
And it's like, right, you know, this week, this one's on special, right? This one's on special, right? This one's on special. And you can have those same students doing multiple courses. So I think that's awesome. Um, let's get, oh, before we get into like the, the sales and the marketing side of things, let us know a little bit about like, um, the actual course surge on, like what platform are you using to host? Is it a hundred percent on demand? Is there a community in there? Let us know a little bit how the, the course kind of works. Yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm using uh, Thinkific as yep. the platform to host the, uh, the course and it, it is 100% on demand. Uh, so people purchase the course and they can have it for life. Um, and, and that's basically it. Uh, and then I have a, a Discord server on the side. So everyone who have uh, finished the course, they get invited to a Discord server where I have uh, about uh, 300 uh, developers right now uh, joining it and helping each other to uh, achieve even further in their in lives as uh, web developers. That's awesome. And also price point, because I think this is an interesting one. Because you, what do you price your course at? Yeah, but well, at the full price, it's $14 per ticket. Awesome. And that's US dollar. I know you charge. US dollar. Yeah. 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 You yeah. charge in Danish, and, right? Yeah, in Danish crowns. Yeah. 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 Because that's another thing as well. Going back to that local market, me charging in Australian dollars is easier for the Australian market. And now I've just started um, expanding into North America and I use US dollars, you know, when selling over there. Uh, but even, even in Canada, I sell US dollars and I get complaints, you know, yeah. it's like, oh, I'm yeah. in Canada, you know, why are you selling in US dollars? It's kind of like, well, yeah. I'm in Australia. So I think that also um, pushes it in your favor as well. Someone's buying from a Dan from someone in Denmark using the Danish currency, like it, it stacks the odds in the, in the favors there. Uh, and I think definitely. It, and I think the other thing as well, like a lot of people, um, you know, listening to this would want to charge probably more for their courses. I don't want to charge 14 bucks. I want to charge 100, 200, 300, 400, 1,000. And that's all well and good. But in my opinion, what matters is the end revenue. You know, Sir John made $2,000 in a night, give or take. You know, he made 200 yeah. sales at, at, you know, 10 bucks or whatever it is, $2,000 in a night. Now, if he sold it at $200, would he have made that much? maybe maybe no not. not at all not at all yeah exactly yeah, so that's where it's all. important to to look at the market and like it doesn't matter what one course costs it can be very easy to be like oh it's only 14 bucks whatever and i sell mine for 500 but that means nothing you know what matters if it's an on-demand course anyway different story if you're giving up your time and you need to do you know one-on-one -on -one sessions or group sessions or whatever then you need to value your time but with surgery i'm like it doesn't matter what he sells it for the workload is the same either way Zero minutes. So it's just like, how can yeah, we essentially true. make this, make as much revenue? So love that. Um, all right. Let us know a little bit about the the marketing side of it, Sir John. So the for, maybe, maybe go from the start, maybe go from the idea. I think you mentioned TikTok, but kind of run us through that process when you were like, right, you know, I want to get this course. How am I going to market it and sell it? Yes, and market and sell it. Run us through that. Yeah, so it, it all goes a year back, actually. Uh, so last year in about, uh, yeah, actually, October last year, um, I, I started a YouTube uh, channel uh, where I, I was making more long, long, uh, long uh, term videos, explaining uh, some tutorials, um, um, things, and also in, in, in Danish. Um, and um, it was going uh, steady, but not so um, uh, amazingly. Uh, there was, I think it was like 1,500 people subscribed the first year. Uh, but the, the views are very low. Uh, it's about 100 or, or so. Um, and then I had a, a small break because I was uh, still uh, working as a teacher and was teaching my class. Um, and back in May, actually on, on the 21st May this uh, year, I posted my first video on, uh, on TikTok just to try it out, to try the market. Um, and the first video got like uh, 10,000 views overnight. Oh. I was like, what, what happened? What happened actually here? <laughs> I mean, the <laughs> same video I posted on, on YouTube got like 95 views. And this one about, about 10K overnight. I was like, yeah, okay, right. there is something interesting here. Um, so I spent the, the summer and, and, and part of the big year here just to grow my audience and always think about one day I will be able to use this audience to sell out, sell my courses to them. Yeah, um, right. And the, the way I actually interact, it's very personal. Uh, very, uh, I ask them questions. They ask me questions. I, I reply to them directly. And every Thursday night at uh, 8 a.m., 8 p.m., sorry, um, we have this what we call a uh, Tech Tuesday, where we actually uh, Tech Thursday, where, where we talk about the news from the last uh, week, 
so I, I go on a live and it, uh, there's about 500 people uh, watching every every uh, Thursday. Wow. Uh, so there is a small active audience. And, uh, and that's the, actually the audience that I was using to promote my course uh, back in, in uh, September. So I, I was pitching it uh, weeks up to that I'm uh, working this course. I was making the stories when I was recording it, uh, actually trying to get my users to be a part of the creation of the course. Uh, all the, all the mm -hmm. thoughts I was doing, I was asking them questions about what would you like me to include in this uh, is this too much is this too little uh, you know and um, at, at the end uh, when we had this uh, live event every uh, week i just uh, promoted and said uh, here you are here's the uh, house call um, coupon code uh, if you type in tiktok you get a half price off and people just went mad uh, i think because they, they already knew what was happening what was going on yeah. and they knew the quality of my um, uh, my content uh, so they knew what to expect and i think that's the most most important thing as a course creator to give your audience something they can see, they can feel, and, and get some kind of a feeling of what is it that I, I can expect in a course by this creator. Uh, so, so this was actually what made it happen for me because I was uh, so passionate about my audience and they actually just uh, gave me a, a, a water at, at the end. Wow. Okay. So there's so many good points there that I want to summarize for the, <laughs> the audience there because it's like, because I have these conversations a lot and I've done it a few times myself as well, I'm able to look at the key points and be like, right, if someone does this, 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 and this, they're going to be successful. And I can you know, identify those, those key points there. I think the first thing that Sir John did really well is he built that audience first. A lot of people listening to this probably build the course first. If you're listening to this, you'll know that. You know, It's kind of like, it sounds like the logical thing to do is to build the course first and then be like, right, I've got this course. Let me go and sell it. Now, it doesn't really work like that in real life because you're going to have a course and you're going to have no one to sell it to. And then you need to try and grow this following. And then you're kind of on the back burner if you do it that way there. Um, also, if you do it that way, you don't really know what's covered, uh, what to put in the course and what the audience wants. Sir John kind of did it the other way. He built the audience first. He asked the audience, hey, what do you want in this course? What do you not want in the course? And then he built his course around that. So it's just way easier to do it that way than the other way there. There's a few other things I want to identify just before I go into it. To grow your TikTok, Sir John, did you do did you do any research there? Like did you, did you do any courses, hire any consultants, read some blogs, watch some YouTube videos? Or was it more just, right, I'm going to post content on TikTok and see what happens? It was basically the last thing, uh, but okay. keep in mind, I, I've been doing marketing for many years, so yeah. I, I'm not a, a new into marketing. So for, for me, it yeah. was not that big a jump to go from uh, Instagram to YouTube, from YouTube to TikTok. Yeah. Um, once you understand how the content creation work and how the what people want, uh, you just give more, more of that. Uh, and for me, it was so easy uh, because I was lucky to hit the first video. Uh, I just yeah. knew, okay, they really want me to explain some very, very basic things in how programming works and then all the other questions about so where do i get a job as a programmer how much do i earn what, what do i need to have before i can uh, seek the job and all, all these things that goes on on a parallel universe as what the main content is um and, and once you understand how tiktok works about how all the human to human relationship uh it's it's so much easier to to, to know what to do uh, after that Yes. So yeah, for everyone listening, I think that's a key point. Build your audience first and there is going to be a bit of a lag, but it's kind of like, it's the best way to do it. And if you do it the other way, it's really, really hard. The other thing that sounds like you did really well is made your TikTok account very personal. I think what a lot of people do when starting off is over automate everything where it's kind of like, yeah. right, you know, I want to have this online course. I don't want to do anything. You know, I want to have these videos. I want to plug these videos in, you know, Planoly or, or some sort of platform. They go on there. I've got an assistant replying to things. Someone goes into my automated funnel. They watch an automated video and they get these automated emails and, you know, I want to be hands off. And look, I like all that sort of stuff down the line. I think when starting off, it's important to make it as manual as possible and then you can start to take some of these things out. E even in your case, Sir John, I guess you did have some things automated, which was the course. Someone still could buy the course and then go into it straight away. Uh, but even True. if someone didn't have that, 
could have been like, right, you know, let me just get this stuff. Let me do the, the first time. Let me make it as manual as possible. Okay, right. Now I've got this process that works really well manually. How can I take some things out of it? You know, now I might change the webinar from live to automated. Now I know what yeah. emails work. So I might change them from, you know, campaign to, to automation. You know, now I've taught the course live a couple of times. And I know what works. Now I'm going to put it on, on demand. So I think that's key for everyone listening. I know the dream because I think it's easy to look at, the people that are really successful and be like, well, these people are doing absolutely nothing. That's what I want to do it like, <laughs> but it takes years and years and years to, to kind of get there, you know? So, so true. yeah, I think that's an in, important thing there. Uh, and then the other thing you mentioned is that you were really passionate about your students. Another thing I find with course creators is a lot of the time they're passionate about the thing, which you, I guess you have to be as well. I think you are as well, but I think there's a of difference course. between being like, you know, hey, I'm passionate about web developing and I want to, you know, do everything web developing or to be like, hey, I am passionate about my students. I'm passionate to help people, you know, learn about web developing or become web developers. It's a subtle difference, but it's kind of like, um, I, I think it's a big one. What's what's your take on that, Sir John? The difference, I guess, between the thing and the students. You, you're so, so spot on. I mean, the students, that's, that's where the personality shines. I mean, that, mm -hmm. that's where you can show yourself as a human and talk to another human being. If you're just talking about uh, ed education or the, the, the craftsman, there, that is, it's just too dry <laughs> as a program. Yeah. It, it, there's, there's not so much personality there. And, and the, the best feature that was ever made in TikTok was the ability to, to reply by video on comments. Mm -hmm. Because if you, if you just answer by text, no one will see that answer beside that person who asked the question. Yeah. But if you make a video reply, thousands of thousands of people will see the same answer who might have the, uh, the question that by themselves, uh, but they're not, they haven't asked it yet uh, to me. So that's the, the best house call um, marketing trick is to reply on the comments by the video because there's so many of other people will see that uh, reply and and then it's like a, a water droplets it, it just gets spread i mean this video will then get other comments and will get other questions you just you can just keep on going going to replying to the same questions over and over and yes it gets uh boring and frustrated to reply the same question but it doesn't matter i mean this is the the, the grind you make because the tiktok won't show your video to everyone it, it, they just pick randomly users so it doesn't matter if you have the same uh, answer on five videos it, it, it will be five different audience who uh, will see yeah. it at the end love it and i guess also like there's a couple things there as well different audiences will see it but even if the same person sees it it's not a horrible thing because it's kind of like not an yeah yeah, I might have seen it three months ago and then I completely forgot about it. And then I see it again. I'm like, oh, that's right. I remember when he when he said that there, you know? Um, or it might be explained slightly different. And and just to put it in perspective, like I'm a big fan of do you know who Alex Hormozzi is? No, sorry. Okay. So he's like a big kind of um entrepreneur, social media guy uh, in America. And mm -hmm. I just binge all his stuff. You know, he's probably the only podcast I, I listen to now. Uh, and he says a lot of the same stories in it, but I love hearing those stories again and again and again, because it, you know, it, it, um, it enforces it in my mind where I'm like, oh, yeah, motivation. Yeah. 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 Um, and also uh, the reason I like that as well is it kind of gets me thinking like him. And it's kind of like, if I see that question in my life, I can kind of think, well, what would Hormozy do? Oh, I've heard him speak about this a thousand times. I know exactly what he would do. I'm, I'm going to do it like that. So love that. Sure, sure. Um, now, in regards to the sales, so John, was that just via TikTok as well? Was it just like it, it, so? There wasn't like an opt-in or an email list or a webinar or or anything like that. It was just you, you're doing the TikTok, you're doing your Q and As and that sort of thing on TikTok, and you're just saying in the end, you know, go to the link in the comments and use this code. Or how did that actual sales process work? Just the way you explain it. Um, I, I had no mailing list uh, before uh, before that uh, launch. I, I did the uh, house call live event, uh, gave them something. In, actually, my live event was very based on this subject. So I, I picked up uh, five uh, most uh, frequently asked questions about the subject, did them uh, replies on, on the live event. And then I said, by the way, if you would like to have the full course about this subject, here's what you're going to do. Uh, so people should go, go to my uh, profile, hit 
the link and go and subscribe for the course. So that was the first launch I, I did. Um, and and, and hold, then hold I, on, so again, this was why I ticked, yeah? the live event was why a TikTok. It wasn't like a only webinar TikTok, by yeah. Zoom or yeah. something. It no, was no, just, no, 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 yeah, no. Okay. Only TikTok. Yeah. Uh, yeah. TikTok Live. Uh, that's what I call it. Uh, and I haven't done any promotions on any other other platform. I I, I stick with TikTok uh, because it works for me best. Um, yeah. And, and now that I have this audience, uh, I collected a, a lot of uh, email to my ma mailing list. Uh, a month later, um, I created a course that was even for even more beginners course. Like, mm -hmm. so you would like to learn programming. What do you need to install on your computer? So it was mm -hmm. one step uh, before that. Um, and, and then I had, I had uh, uh, 400 uh, emails on my mailing list. So that course did even better because I did my uh, TikTok live, uh, promoted the course. Uh, and it was a free course because it, I wanted to, people have some kind of a lead magnet um, look like to it. Um, and that course uh, sold so far uh, 812 uh, tickets. Well, Ooh. they didn't sell people. So 812 people subscribed to this course. That's what it's called. But um, ab around half of those uh, subscription to this last course came from the first course uh, subscribers. So I just uh, sent out an email to all of them and said, hey, uh, thank you for buying my course. Uh, here's a new one uh, for free. Uh, uh, try it out. You know? um, so that's the way I, I, I'm trying to grow my audience by releasing new courses, going back to the older audience and, and informing them about new courses and steady and slowly growing the new uh, audience. Love it. Okay. My final question, Sir John, is around mentors. Now, this might be a little different for you because you're obviously in the, the Danish market, but I'll ask it anyway and answer how you can. Uh, sure. I ask every guest uh, who they're, because you're obviously a mentor for plenty of people looking to learn programming. I'm curious to to hear who your mentors have been, but more not so much about the programming side of things, more about like the online business side of things, whether it's the marketing, the sales, yeah. the course creation. Uh, and if you can answer it in three different ways, if you can give us a paid mentor, so someone that you've paid money to and you've done their course or their coaching program or whatever it may be, uh, an unpaid mentor, someone that you haven't paid money to, but you follow them on social, you you know subscribe to their YouTube channel, follow them on Instagram, listen to their podcast, whatever it may be, uh, and a book that you recommend every online course creator should read. So mentors, paid, unpaid, and book. All right. Uh, wow. Um I'm a big. I'm not sure if I go to one specific person uh, for a mentor uh, for buying because most of my knowledge, I actually get it by uh, listening to audiobooks. Mm. So I, I've been I've been reading a lot of, uh, listening to a lot of audiobooks, and ninety percent of my knowledge came from those uh, books. Yeah. And then I have the, the last ten percent. It's actually podcasts like yours, uh, yeah. which actually is more like to find out what is it out there? Uh, what, what's to inspire me? What's to motivate me? Yeah. Um, so if I should go answer the, the your question, it's actually basically by answering the last one. Uh, if people should buy a book, uh, yeah. they should actually go for, for the book that's called um, uh, Marketing Made Simple. I think it was yeah. a, a Don Miller who, yeah. uh, who wrote it. Uh, that book was actually one that actually opened my eyes to marketing. Um, and there's also a, a book called uh, Build a Brand in 30 Days. Also a very, very nice uh, book about all, all about the thing what you should go through uh, for making your brand and, and, and sticking to the concept. And then there was the last book. Uh, it's called, what's it, Launch? Uh, oh, yeah. What you can do. Yeah. Jeff Walker. So those, yeah, Jeff Walker. Yeah, de definitely. So those three books are books that I actually go back to and, and listen to them uh, over and over again when, whenever mm. I, and I need some kind of... Um, new details and to refresh my knowledge that, that's basically it love that let's even break down a few of those so yeah i've read marketing made simple i've also read have you read story brand also by Donald yeah yeah yes yeah definitely uh, i have yeah. i think he made the three books and right now he's waiting for the fourth or something like that i think he made the pre-launch last yeah. week um for the oh. next year so there's a lot of uh waiting <laughs> yeah so donald miller I, I love his story brand book that's one that that really opened my eyes oh. Um, I haven't re read Build a Brand in 30 Days. I'm going to jump on Amazon and, and get it now. That's um, right. And Launch by Jeff Walker. So I think that's probably the biggest book that changed, um, or one of them anyway, that kind of changed my my perspective on life and, and the online world. And I believe he was the first. Now it's easy to launch. You know, we said he it. Was. Hey, he was. He was. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's yeah. kind of like everyone now that's, you know, teaching launches and funnels and, you know, that kind of thing. Like that all started with Jeff Walker. 
he started this this whole launch thing and yeah, everyone yeah. teaching how to launch or how to market or whatnot is a cent is either a watered down version or like their own version of um of what was taught in, in Jeff Walker's book. So I recommend everyone read that. I do need to put a, a warning on that book though. Because as soon as I read it, I was like, this is awesome. And I went and signed up for his <laughs> $3,000 program <laughs> whenever it was straight away. And the program wasn't bad, but it, to be honest, it wasn't that much better than the book. You know, so no, it's no. like, yeah, this like this yeah. book, literally, I'd probably pay a couple thousand bucks for it. So I yep. I, um, I love that. And I also, just something else Sir John said there, which is something that I've changed recently as well. I used to be a massive reader and I was like, right, I want to read a book every single week. You know, I Google, you know, how to be successful and what CEOs do on that. And like the common thing is always, oh, they read a book a week or 50 books a year or whatever it is. So I used to always do that. But then I was hearing, I think it was Alex Hormozzi again, actually. And he was like, hey, you know, everyone says you got to be a big reader, this and that. But he goes, you know what's better than reading a book a week? Just reading five books and knowing those five books inside out. If you know yeah. five good books inside out, as well as if you could teach it, that's probably better than having an idea of 50 different books. And now even like if I go back, I've got hundreds of books on my bookshelf. I've read marketing made simple. I can't remember one thing in it because I didn't, you know, I didn't, I didn't go into detail, but I'm sure if I read it five times, I'd know it well enough to teach it. So I love how you said it there. Cause I think that's a, a key point as well. It's not just about reading it once and saying, Oh, I read the book. It's like, you know, and also, you may be in different places when you read the book, right? Like the first Definitely. time you read launch, you might pick up one or two things. A year later, you may already know those one or two things hands out. There might have been a couple of things you mentioned earlier and you're like, oh, I'm not going to read that. That doesn't make sense. It doesn't apply to me. I'm not ready for that. But a year later, it might. So I think that's that's key there. No, that, that's definitely true. Uh, as you say, you you pick up different parts uh, from the book every time. Uh, and, and as you say, you are on different stage in, in your career, your process. Uh, something might give more sense now than it was before. Uh, but yeah, if, if for all course creators, they should really, really uh, read that book for first. Uh, it's it's, it's a so nice, nicely written, uh, nicely explained. And as you said... I believe that the courses that he have offers on, on the side, it's more, mostly for people who need that uh, kick in the butt yeah. <laughs> to get motivated extra because yeah. the book has it all. It's, yeah. it's up to you now to execute it. And yeah. if you need the help to execute it, then you can pay for this uh, extra course and have this mentorship and all, all this thing going on. Um, and th that's a, a how, it, how it works, I believe. Yeah, 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 100%. And maybe the only other thing is the different format. So when I did his course, yeah. it was all in video format as well. You know, so it's kind of like, you can watch it as you do it and you can watch ah, it on okay. the whiteboard or whatever, you know, but the other thing as well, I feel like if you combine both in today's world, if you maybe read the physical book or the Kindle book and you also get it on audible as well, then you almost get the same experience, you know, cause you're hearing True. him talk and you're reading it there. So it's, it's almost pretty similar to instead of just, um, cause the, the, the course is, you know, him on video with a whiteboard or whatever, but you know him yeah. talking on a whiteboard isn't that different to hearing on Audible and reading the book as well because what's covered in the book is what's on the whiteboard, you know. So <laughs> True. yeah, yeah. But um, also, all right. So that's pretty much all I wanted to cover today, Sir John. Now I know most of your, I know you mainly talk about programming and it's you know all your stuff is kind of in Danish. Do you have any any like social media profiles that someone like an English speaker could follow you on, or that would, or not so much? Well, everybody can follow me. <laughs> my my handle is uh, Dev Teacher uh, on all platforms mainly. So if you just type in Dev Teacher, uh, say hi. I do speak English as well, <laughs> so it, it's it's no big deal. Uh, but yeah, if I'm studying the content, uh, it might be a bit harder for for the odd audience. Awesome. All right. Well, so John, that's pretty much all I wanted to cover today. Is there anything I should have asked you but forgot to, or anything you want to finish us off with? I think we got it all covered, but uh, actually I was uh, listening to your podcast uh, several episodes ago uh, when you were launching your mini course. Um, oh, yes. And, I think, and, and, and I, I've been following on the Facebook uh, group as well, uh, your group. For, uh, everyone who's listened to this course, they, they really need to go there and, and, and listen to it and, and read what people are asking because it's actually the same questions everybody else is <laughs> asking mm -hmm. in there. Um, and all this about uh, what when should I start, what should I do, and... Uh, uh, the best thing is uh, I'm, I'm a big fan of uh, MVP, minimum viable product. Yeah. Um, and and there, there was once, uh, there's a YouTube video out there somewhere uh, where a guy was talking about how you can launch a course 
without even creating a course. Yeah. Just by making making a, a landing page and asking people uh, to push the button to buy button. Eh? And if, if we can all track everything that's happening on our websites. So if you can make a simple website with the buy button without any kind of uh, functionality, you can just see how many people are visiting your website and how many people have actually pushed the buy button. And mm-hmm. that will be a good indication if, if your course has a le- leverage to uh, be something. 100%. Love that. Awesome. All right, Sir John, I'll leave you to it. Yep. Thank you.